Okay, everybody, thanks for joining us this morning. Um, as Colleen said, we're going to be talking about health coverage in Wisconsin. So we're going to talk about both Medicaid and the healthcare marketplace. Our agenda for today, um, we'll talk about the application process and eligibility for the different types of Medicaid um, and the process for doing a fair hearing request in situations where you would want to do a fair hearing request. We'll also talk about the marketplace, both the application process and eligibility, and then um, appeal requests under the healthcare marketplace. Before we get started, I just wanted to make an announcement that there is a webinar coming up next week um, specifically about enrolling immigrant families in health coverage through Medicaid, CHIP, and the Affordable Care Act. And it goes into uh, greater detail about immigrant eligibility for the plans. We'll talk a little bit about it, uh, and one of your handouts at the end is actually about immigrant eligibility for, for Medicaid. But if you see a big immigrant population um, with your program, this might be a webinar that you'd be interested in attending. Okay, so starting with Medicaid, we're going to start with a poll question. So just take a minute to answer this question. What is Wisconsin's health care program for children and families called? Is it CareSource, is it Badger Care Plus, Health Plan, or Cheesehead Care Plus? Okay, I'll just give you a couple more seconds to answer. Okay, we've got a very well-educated group this morning. So Badger Care Plus is the name of Wisconsin's program for children and families. I kind of wish it was Cheesehead Care Plus, but we'll go with Badger Care Plus. <clears throat> so for the application process for Medicaid, there are a couple different ways to apply. You can apply online at access.wisconsin.gov. Uh, you can play, apply by mail. I included a link um, to the application form, and it is available in three different languages, English, Hmong, and Spanish. So you can send in the application after you fill it in by mail. Uh, you can also apply with your local agency, and the link is right there for how to find your local agency. So that would be your local welfare department. You could go in and apply there. You can apply anytime. There's no special enrollment period for Medicaid. I think um, it's important to stress that with clients because right now, and we'll talk more about this later, but right now we're in the open enrollment period for the healthcare marketplace, and sometimes people get confused and think that there's also an open enrollment period for Medicaid. But for Medicaid, you can apply at any time. Okay, so we'll start with Badger Care Plus. So for eligibility, you have to be a Wisconsin resident. You have to be a U.S. citizen or a qualifying immigrant. Um, and qualifying immigrants do include refugees, victims of severe trafficking, asylees, which means someone that has asylum status, and also lawful permanent residents, some of which have a five-year bar. So what that means is five years after becoming a lawful permanent resident, they would be able to, to get Medicaid or Badger Care Plus as long as they meet the other eligibility um, requirements. Battered immigrants are also a category of qualified immigrants, but they also have that five-year bar. So after five years after they're adjudicated a battered immigrant, they would be eligible for Medicaid, Badger Care Plus, um, as long as they meet the other requirements. Um, you have to be a child age 18 or younger with income at or below 300% of the federal poverty level. And we'll get into what the federal poverty level is in a couple slides. You could be an adult with income at or below 100% of the federal poverty level, a pregnant woman with income at or below 300% of the federal poverty level, or a young adult under age 26 who is in foster care, um, court-ordered kinship care, or subsidized guardianship um, prior to turning age 18, regardless of your income. And what I wanted to stress too is, um, you know, instead of calculating out your client's income to try to see if, if they're at or below the, the necessary poverty level for their category. Um, when in doubt, have clients apply for Medicaid or for the healthcare marketplace because certain types of income are not counted and the rules can get pretty complicated. So in, instead of um, you know, mistakenly telling someone that they, they don't qualify, um, it, it doesn't hurt to apply. So some types of income that are not typically counted um, for Medicaid, for Badger Care Plus purposes, include child support, supplemental security income or SSI, workers' compensation, and veterans' benefits. 
Um, one thing that I also wanted to point out is that um, having Badger Care Plus, having Medicaid, does not typically make someone what's what we call a, a, a public charge in, in terms of immigration. Um, so if people who have uh, a green card or people who are hoping to apply for their green card often worry about being a public charge, which, which can happen um, if they receive certain public benefits. Um, but having Badger Care Plus does not make someone a public charge. The one exception would be a long-term stay in a medical institution that's a longer stay than for rehabilitative purposes. So that would be like nursing home care. But by and large, Badger Care Plus does not make an immigrant a public charge. Okay, we've got another poll question here. Uh, we're going to talk about the federal poverty level. So what do you think is 100% of the federal poverty level for 2016 for a household of three people? So take a guess here. Our options are $1,468, $1,680, and $2,135. Okay, a couple more seconds. Okay, so we've got a lot of people in each of the categories. Um, so we're going to skip to the next slide and see what the answer is. Okay, so this is the, the 2016 federal poverty level. So you can see for a family size of three people, if you go to 100% of the federal poverty level, it's actually $1,680. And these guidelines, the federal poverty levels, um, they're going to be updated in February of 2017. So this, this grid that you see here is what's used for, for Badger Care Plus determinations, for Medicaid determinations up until that time. The next type of Medicaid that I'm going to talk about is Badger Care Plus prenatal plan. And this plan is for people who are otherwise eligible for Badger Care Plus, but they don't meet the, the qualified immigrant category or their inmates um, in a public institution. So what that means is that someone who's currently incarcerated. So if you have a client who otherwise would be eligible for Badger Care Plus, but she, she doesn't meet the, the immigration qualifications, um, this would be a great option. The state, I think, has recognized that it's, it's in everybody's best interest for pregnant women to receive prenatal care. Um, so this, this type of coverage, Badger Care Plus prenatal plan, um, actually allows the person to receive any of the normally covered Badger Care Plus services, um, but the eligibility category is because the person is pregnant. So the person can receive services other than just prenatal care, but they qualify because they are pregnant. And for this type of, of coverage, it, the coverage ends at the end of the month in which the baby is born. Um, so it's important to update your caseworker if you are going past your due date or if it looks like you're going to go past your due date, especially um, if it's, your due date is at the end of the month and you're going to deliver in the following month. The next type of coverage we'll talk about is called Wisconsin Medicaid for the Elderly, Blind, or Disabled, and it's often called EBD Medicaid. So you may qualify for EBD Medicaid if you're a Wisconsin resident, you're age 65 or older, blind or disabled, and your family income and assets are at or below the monthly program limit. And then again, if you're a U.S. citizen or qualifying immigrant. Emergency services plan, um, so it provides short-term coverage for people with an emergency medical condition. So the, the example that I've listed here is for appendicitis. Um, and the person has to meet all program rules for Badger Care Plus except for immigration status. So like I said, this, this would cover someone who meets all of the qualifications except for immigration status if they have a burst appendix and need an appendectomy. This is also the type of coverage that someone would receive if they don't sign up for that Badger Care Plus prenatal service plan. Um, this would cover labor and delivery for the person as long as they meet the financial eligibility requirements, all the other eligibility requirements for Badger Care Plus except the immigration status requirement. And oftentimes hospital systems are pretty um, savvy about applying for this for someone. 
family planning only services. So this is for people who are U.S. citizen or qualifying immigrants. Um, they're of childbearing or reproductive age. They have monthly income at or below 300% of the federal poverty level, and they're not enrolled in Badger Care Plus or any other type of Medicaid. You can be enrolled in private health insurance and, and receive this coverage. Um, so basically what family planning only services covers is contraceptive services and supplies, natural family planning supplies, pap smear tests, routine preventive primary services that are family planning related, um, and tests and treatment for sexually transmitted infections like chlamydia, herpes, gonorrhea, and syphilis, as well as certain lab tests. It also can provide coverage for tubal ligation for women um, or voluntary sterilizations for men 21 years or older. And the, you know, as you can see, the 300% of the federal poverty level actually goes up pretty high. So for a person, a household of one, 300% of the federal poverty level at this time in 2016 is $2,970. So a lot of clients who might not think that they're eligible for Badger Care Plus would be eligible for family planning only services. Wisconsin Well Woman Medicaid, um, so to qualify for, for this, you have to be under age 65, a U.S. citizen or qualifying immigrant, and have a diagnosis for breast or cervical cancer or precancerous condition of the cervix, and you need treatment for the condition. Um, you also have to show that you don't have coverage by private or other public health insurance for the treatment of this condition. Okay, we've got another poll question here. Um, what other types of coverage are available in Wisconsin? We've got refugee medical assistance, senior care prescription drug assist, tuberculosis related services only, or all of the above. Please vote now. Okay, a couple more seconds. Okay, so technically everybody's right. So all of the above, we have refugee medical assistance. Um, so if that is, if you have refugee clients, certainly looking into that further about how to qualify for refugee medical assistance. Typically it's done by the resettlement agency and, and you don't have to worry about it, but keep that in mind. Senior care prescription drug assist. So if you have someone, um, an, a senior who's looking for prescription drug assistance, that would be a great option. Tuberculosis related services only. So that would be someone who does not qualify for Badger Care Plus. Um, sometimes it's for immigration reasons, um, but they would qualify for treatment, um, testing and treatment of tuberculosis. Okay, so now we'll talk about a fair hearing. When would a client want to request a fair hearing? And a fair hearing is the appeals process for, for a Medicaid case. So if you have a client whose application was denied or benefits were suspended, reduced, ended, um, and it appears that the local agency made a mistake, that would be a situation where you would want to request a fair hearing. Um, another situation is if your application has not been acted on within 30 days. So if you apply um, and nothing has happened, you have not received a decision within 30 days, that could be a situation where you would request a fair hearing. Another time you would request a fair hearing is when prior authorization was denied. So if you have Badger Care Plus, if you have one of the other Medicaid plans and you requested prior authorization for something and it was denied and you feel like it was an er error, that would be a situation where you could request a fair hearing. So the deadline for a fair hearing request is no later than 45 days after the date of action or inaction. So the date of action is typically the date on the notice when coverage was terminated or denied. Um, a date of inaction would be um, if, if, the, if the application was not acted upon. So there are three different ways to request a fair hearing. The first way is, is the recommended way. So using the actual fair hearing request form, I've provided the link for it. Um, a second option is calling, I listed the number, and the third option is writing directly to the Department of in Administration. 
Um, I prefer that people use the first option because then you know that all of the information necessary to request appeal is included on the form, and it also is a way to keep a paper trail. So you know, you'd keep a copy of the fair hearing request form before sending it in. If you do decide to write directly to the Department of Administration to request an appeal, to request a fair hearing, you'd need to include your name, mailing address, a brief description of the problem, name of the local agency that took the action or denied the service, Social Security number, Badger Care Plus identification number, and signature. Um, and if you if your client needs an interpreter at the fair hearing request, it would be best to request the interpreter at the time of requesting the hearing. And that's another good reason to use the request form and to request the interpreter in writing to have proof that you did that. There is legal representation available for fair hearing sometimes. So both legal action and Judicare do public benefits cases. Um, they're not able to take every case, but it's worth calling um, doing an intake to see if they would be able to represent your client on uh, Medicaid issues. So I've listed the phone number and website for both Legal Action and Judicare. Legal Action is 1-888-278-0633 or legalaction.org. Judicare is 715-842-1681, judicare.org. And you can look at their websites to see which counties they cover. You may also bring another representative of your choosing to the hearing. Um, so that could be an advocate, that could be a friend, that could be a clergy member, that can be basically whoever you want it to be. So preparing for the hear fair hearing, you have the right to bring witnesses, um, you have the right to bring your own attorney or other representative, um, you have the right to see the local agency's written materials about the case before and after the hearing. So the written materials might be case notes that your caseworker takes. It might be um, the, the screens that they use to calculate finances to see if someone qualifies. Um, and you have the right to actually ask for that ahead of the hearing. So that's definitely useful because then you know what, what the issue is that you need to, to discuss with the hearing officer. You do have the right to question anyone who testifies against you, and typically um, the only people that are testifying in these hearings are the caseworkers um, and then the actual person that applied for the benefits or who was um, terminated from the benefits. You have the right to pre present your own arguments, to bring written materials showing why you think you're right, um, and then you also have the right to a free interpreter if necessary. So what types of written materials might you bring? That could be pay stubs, that could be tax returns, just depends on the reason for the denial or the term termination. Aid pending. So if you ask for a fair hearing before the effective date of the local agency's action, you can actually ask that your coverage continue during the appeal process. So if you, in a Medicaid situation, if you file your appeal before the date that the agency says that your, your Medicaid is going to be terminated, then you would actually be able to keep it during the appeal process. But they do have a rule saying that if a fair hearing decision is not in your favor, you will have to repay any benefits that you should not have received. So let's talk about a case scenario. And this is a, a case that I had when I was at Legal Aid representing clients. So Rosa's application for Badger Care Plus for her two children was denied. The notice she received said that her income was too high. Rosa's advocate looked at her income and calculated that Rosa earns $1,800 a month. Should Rosa ask for a fair hearing? And if so, what proof should she bring? So we're just going to go back to that federal poverty level. So Rosa is a household of three, and it said she made $1,800 a month. So we know from our earlier slides that for the kids, they can go up to 300% of the federal poverty level. So for a household of three, that would be over $5,000. So it seems like a mistake was made there. Um, for Rosa, as the adult, um, she might not qualify, but the kids should qualify. So what, what types of things might you bring to the fair hearing? In this situation, I would bring any proof of Rosa's income. So pay stubs for the last couple months, um, tax returns, maybe an employment verification letter saying how much she earned. And in the case I had like this, what ended up happening is um, the caseworker had input 
her income incorrectly in the system. So she was paid on a biweekly basis, and the caseworker had input the income on a weekly basis. So it looked like Rosa was earning double what she actually was earning. And that's where getting copies of the caseworker's notes and the finance, financial screens ahead of time can sometimes save you the, the trip of going to a fair hearing. Because if you request that information and you see that that's where the mistake was made, calling the caseworker and trying to get it worked out ahead of time might save everybody some time. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the healthcare marketplace. Um, so that's Something that was created through the Affordable Care Act is often called Obamacare. And the reason that we actually wanted to hold this webinar during November is that open enrollment just started um, November 1st. So we are currently in open enrollment period. Um, as we talked about before, for Medicaid there is not an open enrollment period. You can apply for Medicaid at any time. But for the healthcare marketplace there is an open enrollment period and um, it does end um, December 15th if you want your plan to start January 1st. Um, and as far as the last possible date, January 31st, 2017 is the last day to enroll in or change a plan. There are special enrollment periods if you've had a life change, and we'll get into that, but definitely it's something to keep in mind and to post at your programs and talk to clients about that this is a, a really important time to sign up for the healthcare marketplace. So the application process is a little different. So Wisconsin was a state um, that decided to go on the national exchange. So people, can, um, people in Wisconsin can apply for coverage through the healthcare marketplace on healthcare.gov. They can also call 1-800-318-2596. You can apply by mail. Again, it's important to keep copies. And I might even go so far as to send it certified. Um, you can also apply with in-person help. So for someone um, who wants to sign up right away but is maybe not computer savvy or just would feel more comfortable signing up with someone help, you can um, look at that, that link, localhelp.healthcare.gov slash pound sign intro, um, and that will take you to the programs that have funding to do um, in-person help, signing people up for the marketplace. So for eligibility, you have to live in the United States. You have to be a U.S. citizen or national or have qualifying immigration status. You cannot be incarcerated. Um, and to receive the premium tax credits, you have to have income between 100% and 400% of the federal poverty level. So in Wisconsin, um, if you're under 100% of the federal poverty level, um, you, would, you would possibly qualify for Medicaid, for Badger Care Plus. Um, but if you're between that 100% and 400% of the federal poverty level, you would qualify for the tax credits that would lower your monthly premium for the, the health plan. If your income is above 400% of the federal poverty level, you can still purchase coverage through the exchange, but you will not get those premium tax credits to offset the monthly premium. Okay, so we've got this quiz question, but it looks like it wasn't made into a poll. So what happens if I apply for the healthcare marketplace but don't qualify because my income is below 100% of the federal poverty level? The so options are I receive a denial, my application should be deferred to Department of Health Human Services for determination if I qualify for Badger Care Plus Medic or Medicaid, or all of the above. So the answer is all of the above. So if you apply for the healthcare marketplace but you don't qualify for the premium tax credits because of the 100% um, you're below 100% of the federal poverty level, your case would be referred to DHS um, and it would be assessed to see if you qualify for Badger Care Plus or a different type of Medicaid and you would receive a written decision. So you can go to healthcare.gov for specifics about exemptions for 2017, but there are a couple different types of, of exemptions that we'll talk about. So a couple exemptions um, are poverty-based exemptions. Um, and exemptions are important because under the Affordable Care Act, um, you have to sign up for coverage, healthcare coverage, um, or you get dinged on your taxes, but there are exceptions to who is, is going to experience that. So poverty-based exemptions, so if you filed for bankruptcy, um, recently, if you have been evicted recently, if you've been homeless, 
family-based exemptions, um, and that's what's important for, for our programs is domestic violence. So domestic violence can exempt you from signing up for, for coverage under the healthcare marketplace. Certain, in certain in instances, death of a family member can, can lead to an exemption. And then there are also exemptions um, that are based on unexpected circumstances. So they, those could be natural disaster. That could be your child was denied Medicaid or CHIP when you expected them to be approved. So again, healthcare.gov has specifics about who qualifies for an exemption in 2017, and there are different forms that you need to fill out to qualify for the exemption. Okay, so special enrollment periods. Um, you can qualify to enroll in the healthcare marketplace when it is not open enrollment if you can show loss of qualifying health coverage, change in household size, so that could be a change in marital status, it could be having a baby, adopting a child, uh, or having a child placed with you for foster care. Uh, it could be gaining or becoming a dependent due to a child support or other court order, a change in primary place of living, so that would be like a move, change in eligibility for marketplace coverage, or help paying for coverage, so that could be a change in income that makes you eligible where you were not before, an enrollment or plan error, or other qualifying changes. So that includes being the victim of domestic violence or spousal abandonment, um, and the person wants to enroll in a health plan separate from the abuser or the abandoner. So that's a, um, a typical situation that we see with, with programs um, where someone qualifies for a special enrollment period. Okay, now we'll talk about the appeal request. When to ask for an appeal of healthcare marketplace coverage. So that would be where the marketplace erroneously determines that you are not eligible for one of the following things. Health coverage through the marketplace, financial assistance, so that would be the premium tax credits um, that we talked about, an exemption from paying the fee for not having health coverage, and enrolling in or changing plans through the marketplace outside a regular open enrollment period. So for any of those reasons, you could ask for an appeal. You could also ask for an appeal if you disagree with the amount of financial assistance reward, awarded. So that would be um, the amount of premium tax credits or cost sharing reductions that you receive. If you think you should have received more or higher amount, then you can appeal. Another reason you could appeal is if the marketplace did not provide a timely eligibility, eligibility determination on your application. Okay, now we're getting to the appeal request. So this is a screenshot of the Marketplace Eligibility Appeal Request form. Um, it's available in English and Spanish, and you can see it's available at healthcare.gov. You can fax it to 1-877-369-0129. You can mail it to the address listed on the form instructions. Um, and also submit copies of any supporting documents. So if your denial was based on um, the amount of money you earn and you think that the calculation was done incorrectly, that would be things like your W-2, that would be things like your 1040, your pay stubs to show what your income is. Um, definitely keep copies of the, app, uh, the appeal request form and any copies you submit. The deadline to request an appeal on the healthcare marketplace is within 90 days of the date on the eligibility determination notice that you're appealing. Um, and if you do have immediate need for health services where a delay could jeopardize your health, you can ask for an expedited appeal review. And that's on Section 4 of the appeal request form. That is all we had for today, so I'm happy to take questions if you have any questions. So this concludes our presentation of health coverage in Wisconsin, Medicaid and Healthcare Marketplace webinar, recorded on November 8, 2016. Again, thank you so much for joining us today.